the the reality is you got people losing their lives from gambling addiction as well sex right. addiction as well and they, they don't they're ashamed of it they can't get a control of it many of them end up taking their own lives right um, so the, the the recovering addict regardless of what you're covering recovering from whether it's behavior or substance abuse have to be guarded right Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources so that you may be able to identify those around you that may be struggling with life debilitating addictions. We are a Christ based organization that works with addicts every day. And Brother A, last time we were talking about the transference, addiction transference, or cross cross addiction. addiction. Mm -hmm. And we're going to con continue in that conversation. And last time we were really talking about how one. When an addict has basically recovered or they'll and they may take that addiction and it may be months years or two years and they'll take that addiction and actually end up transferring it to another type of addiction like right. food addiction sex sometime other way and we really were talking about how to kind of look for those in our loved ones or those that ourselves or how we can do that um, what would be another step that we need to look at for in that right. aspect? So of, co of course, uh, you know, there, there are uh, various reasons for why a, 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 a transference of addiction or addiction transference develops. Uh, so you take, for example, an alcoholic uh, who has some sort of injury and he goes to the hospital for that and or his doctor for that and he doesn't inform the doctor that and we encourage the, 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 the men we work with anytime you go to the doctor you need to inform them that you are you, you are in recovery right why because the doctor if the doctor doesn't know that he might prescribe you a narcotic for pain right and so the alcoholic he goes in to see his doctor uh, and he doesn't inform him. The doctor prescribes him, say, Vicodin or, or Percocet for pain. Right. Uh, he begins to take that medication, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, he's transferred addiction. He continues to, to take it because he likes the feeling. Uh, right. And so he's transferred it to uh, uh, now substance. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's from the doctors and I even think of even depression where somebody may be been clean and sober and something happens or death of a loved one or something like that so, some type of trigger mm -hmm. and you no know, they may they may they may have been on a strong heavy narcotic before but this time like you said before they transfer it to say uh, food or even even to um, alcohol like, or, go or back to, to even a compulsive behavior right um, you know the the, the, the recovering al alcoholic or the recovering drug addict. They go, they decide to go to a casino. Right. Uh, just got back last week from Vegas from doing some training there, <laughs> uh, and uh, yes, the amount of people there in the casinos gambling was mind-boggling to me. Uh, but I I could even look into some of the eyes of some of those people and see, hey, they they are really consumed by right. this behavior. Um, if I'm in recovery, certainly I don't want to put myself at risk by going into a casino. Right. And, but we, we rationalize things in our head. Well, that wasn't my addiction. Right. You know, uh, alcohol was my addiction. Well, there's alcohol there, too. It's, right, exactly. You know, and they're passing free drinks out as long as you're gambling. Yeah. Um, or or, or, or uh, that wasn't my addiction. Uh, I was addicted to cocaine or I was addicted to opioids and I'm in recovery. So that shouldn't be an it. Not realizing the risk that you are putting, it, it, taking by, by doing that behavior or trying a different uh, substance right. could cause you to end up transferring uh, your addiction. Right. And we've already talked about before that an addict is a, basically an addict is somebody that overindulges on something Correct. and just by evening opening that yourself up you're opening yourself to overindulge in gambling you're overindulging in eating all, all any of those aspects and right. it's just something that an addict is more 
uh, susceptible to right. to being doing that over and over. So that you have to be really careful because you will have a chance of transferring a lot easier than somebody that hasn't. Well, if you can't really transfer if you haven't had an addiction, correct? Well, no, that, that, that's interesting. <laughs> you don't you you don't know you have an addiction until you have an addiction, right? Um, and many people have addiction, but don't necessarily classify it as addiction because. They don't look at whatever they're doing as being harmful. You mentioned earlier about the gaming. Right. You know, uh, they look at gaming as being harmless. Right. Uh, uh, some people look at gambling as being harmless. Right. Um, sex. Right. Harmless. So most of the, the behavioral addictions, a lot of times people will look at them and don't see the harm in doing them. And, and even if they overindulge in them, don't necessarily identify uh, that they're harmful. Right. Uh, but but it's real important for someone in recovery, recovering from uh, drugs and alcohol. You know, drugs and alcohol tend to be, the spotlight tends to just stay on them from an addiction standpoint. Right. Um, uh, you know, uh, obviously because, uh, you know, you have so many that are losing their lives due, due to drug addiction. Um, but... The, the reality is you got people losing their lives from gambling addiction as well, sex right. addiction as well. And they, they don't, they're ashamed of it. They can't get a control of it. Many of them end up taking their own lives. Right. Um, so the, the, the recovering addict, regardless of what you're covering, recovering from, whether it's behavior or substance abuse, have to be guarded. Right. Now, you know, you know if having fun is more important than your life, you're going to run into problems with right. that. Um, but you have to have your guard up and be aware of what you what you can or what you should or should not do. Right. Um, to, to to keep from putting yourself at risk. Right. You know, that's just important. You got to be open and honest with your doctor. You go to the doctor. Hey, I'm a recovering addict. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Right. Uh, and not put yourself at risk. Because if you don't, and he give you that, and you might say to you in your own head, "I'm, you know, I didn't tell him, but I'm not going to take these." Right. Uh, you're going to take these because the temptation will come. Right. If you know anybody that is struggling with a transference or even a life debilitating addiction, please reach out to us at 833-462-8286, or click go to the web and click on that get help button on our website at atctn.org. Um, and I was just thinking another addiction maybe that people aren't even thinking about is social media at this oh, point. Huge. I mean, if you're sitting there scrolling through your social media and all of a sudden an hour, two hours, three hours have passed Correct. and you don't even know where, what happened because you thought you were only doing it for 30 seconds, there might be a problem there. You might be a problem. And if you can't uh, sit or, or be anywhere without having to check your social media, without having to scroll through, that, that's an indication. You, you know, we went through the whole five character. Maybe we need to do that again. Five characteristics of a life controlling problem, or, or and in some cases they refer to it as chemical dependency. I like using life controlling problems because it's much broader and it focuses not just on substance and alcohol, right. but it focuses on behavior uh, problems as well. But but if if you if if that is what is consuming the, a lot of your time, majority of your time, then it is it is primary in your life. Right. If you're sitting for hours just watching television, that's an indication that you have a problem. Yeah, um, you you can't do anything else, uh, or you you don't want to stop to do anything else but that. Right. Um, you know, I, I found even myself and I'm a recovering addict now, right. almost 28 years. And, uh, uh, you know, I found myself scrolling through on Facebook, you know, e even forgive me, but even in the bathroom on the toilet. Right. And I'm scrolling through and I'm sitting there just scrolling. Wait a minute. I got to get up from here. <laughs> right. You know, and that's something that I say I can struggle with because one, I'm in the production business. So I, I do study a lot of TV and watch a lot of TV. Social media, I deal with a lot of the social media accounts for a lot of different clients here at ATCTN as well and right. a whole bunch of others. So I am on social media a lot. Right. But what I have to be careful of is there's comes to a point I have to put it down. Exactly. And I have to be able to determine what is work and what is pleasure in it. Right. Because sometimes 
yeah, it can be. Hey, I just want to see what's going on with my friends right. that I haven't made contact with. There's that aspect of it, but then there's also a business aspect, and you have to be careful. And it's a very fine line. But when I start, and my wife has, thank God she's account, keeps me accountable to this. Hey, you know you're on that thing too much at this point, and you you're neglecting us. Correct. So there's there that helps, and yeah, it it comes to a point that. What's our go-to sometimes is pick up our phone. Is it's in our pocket? It's there's a, that whole aspect. So that's something that we all, uh, ourselves included, need to be careful with because it is very easy to fall into that. You no, know, in the society we live in, unfortunately, and I, I'm just speaking honestly, specifically for myself, we spend more time with this thing than anything else. Yeah, we do. In in this current society. You know, but one of the things I always like to point back to one of the powerful things that Paul said in First Corinthians 10, uh, chapter t- chapter 23. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Verse 23, chapter 10, verse 23. He said, all things are permissible. Right. But not all things are beneficial. And right. he, he went on to say, he said, I will not be a, become a slave to anything. Right. And, and what is he saying to us there? If you allow. Uh, things in this world to consume your life, you will become a slave to it. Right. He says permissible. Nothing. God is not telling you you can't do it. He's right. not telling you you can do it. Right. Um, but he's saying it's permissible. You got permission to do it uh, because you are a free will moral agent. Right. However, he said you need to be mindful, though, right. that if you get caught up into certain things, they may consume you. You may become addicted to it you may transfer uh, addictions right. and, and end up having multiple addictions that you're struggling and battling to overcome uh and so that's why it's so important that we guard our, our ourselves you know right that we discipline ourselves put the phone down get off yep. get off facebook stop playing those games right uh and focus on doing things one for me that that is kingdom impact right now something don't Get, get us wrong saying that this you need to get rid of your phone or anything like that because right. you know this is a tool right and i know i've noticed a trend at church i don't see people walking in with bibles as much but i see them with their bible on their phone correct which is actually a really great tool because now i can in my pocket i have my bible i have resources all the time right here now somebody might uh, uh, some others might uh, you know old school folk might argue with you that you have your bible yeah, I, yeah, I, I understand, but as times change, yeah, this is this is a great tool. Um, nowhere in society, at nowhere ever in time, have we ever been so connected in the world and disconnected and disconnected at the same time. Social media can disconnect us, but it can also bring us together. <clears throat> my dad always talks about when um, my niece and she is, let's see here, she was born in '94, so. Um, 25 years old now, 26 years old now. Um, when she was born, we were overseas, and my dad got a fax of her being born. Okay, a picture of her as a fax, so it mm-hmm. looked like looking through a dirty windshield. Okay, black and white. When my daughter was born, uh, she just turned 12. Uh, we were able to have color pictures, and it was mm. able to basically to live stream right. it to him at the same time of right after she was born. So technology is changing so fast, and so we have that connection. But with that connection, we have to be careful that we yeah, don't, don't get I, addicted I mean, to it too. I don't, I don't, I don't doubt that. I, I think technology can either be a demon or an angel, depending upon how you allow it to consume your life. Right. Um, and, and and you know the scripture tells us, instructs us, do all things in moderation. Right. Uh, and why? Because God understands. That we could, if we don't do it in moderation, we can allow it to consume our lives. And what and what God wants more than anything else, He wants to consume our lives. Right. And there's some really good aspects of of technology. Um, I was hearing just the other day, uh, the Wesleyans who are translating the uh, the Bible into all the different languages. They have just recently moved back when they were going to have it in all languages. I think from like. 2040 2050 something like that all the languages were going to be in the bible is going to be in all languages to 2025 so that te- the technology is speeding things up and language part of it so that, that so that's that's actually amazing so that part so everyone in the gospel everyone in the world will be able to have the gospel in their language well, you know, I do too. I do believe that that 
it, it's you know not none of this exists without god technology doesn't exist without god god gave man the ability to be that creative right in order to do what though to get the gospel the bible is clear the bible says the the, the end won't come until the word the gospel has been spread throughout the world right so so god understands uh that what, 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 what and he wants us to be able to utilize technology to get his message to the world i want it right. to happen too because he he won't come till uh, until then the, the 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 issue is where the enemy has been able to pervert that right. uh in his attempt to thwart if, that, right. if i could use that word what what god intent was with allowing this technology uh to happen well and that's just how everything's any addiction god gave gave sex and that's been perverted god gave help man to create medicine correct and that's been correct perverted to where people correct. are addicted to it so correct it's always a fine line that you have to be careful of mm -hmm. and it's so easy for addicts to do the transference yeah so i mean it's we all struggle with stuff you know i don't know if you rem uh I, 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 i'm pretty sure you remember uh he recently passed away carmen yes the artist uh, gospel artist carmen uh, powerful man of God uh, did a lot of creative things. Right. When I was in the program 28 years ago, um, he had a concert in the pyramid. Okay. And he had the Teen Challenge guys come and help with setup. Okay. And the the title of the concert was "Addicted to Jesus." Matter of fact, I wore the I shirt. Remember, I, I remember that. Yeah. When I, that came out, I wore the T-shirt for years, and I, I can't even remember now. But there was a a hand sign for addicted to Jesus that we would do, uh, that he taught us to do after the Are you A to J? Are you A to J? Yeah. yeah. Are you A to J? And, uh, uh, but, you know, when I think about that and, and concerning the topic that we're talking about is if we're trans, if we want to transfer our addiction, let's transfer our addiction to Jesus. Right. Uh, uh, that's what I'm working to do in my own life every day. Um, that's how I'm working this spiritual program of recovery. So uh, if I'm going to be consumed by something, let me be consumed in prayer. Let me be consumed by his word um, in, or, in, in so that I would be addicted to him. Right. And 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 there's nothing destructive there. There's nothing right. harmful in no. doing that. Now, right. unless I become so spiritually minded, I, uh, I'm no earthly good. Right. But but so there's still a balance you got to have there, too, because right. you, you're still here. Uh, to carry out the mission in which he has you here for. But I think if you are really focused in your relationship the right way, it won't become where you are so heavenly minded, you know, earthly good. You'll be right. focused on his mission and purpose for your life. And that's what I like about our program here. It's not necessarily an addiction recovery program. It's a discipleship program. Correct. So Correct. we're trying mm -hmm. to do help you with that transference of being addicted to alcohol, drugs, what not to to be an addicted to Jesus? Right, we're we're addressing the the the, the addiction uh, uh, mindset from a, a gospel uh, standpoint with the message of the gospel, with the principles from the gospel. That you know, Scripture tells us, uh, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right, and and so that's what this process is all about for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, brother A, I thank you for opening our eyes and i know we kind of went down a little bit of a tangent on technology there for a little <laughs> bit but i think it's something that a lot of people don't even think about they don't, they don't. and we kind of went on that but if you know somebody that is struggling with an addiction and they need help or you're you need help with struggling with addiction please reach out to us at 833-462-8286 or go to the web and go to atctn.org and click on that get help now button and we will get with you and if we can't help you, we'll find somebody that can. Uh, so, but please reach out to us and we'd really love to be able to help you. So we want to thank you for joining us today. And remember, there is hope being free from your addictions. Mm -hmm.